uh, Chinese is really actually only one of the six languages I've seriously studied. So in approaching this, um, this task uh, over the next 10 minutes, um, I want to explain a little bit about, about my experience in studying other languages, and then I'll get to Chinese at the end if, if that's okay. Um, and along the way, I'll mention a bit about my professional uh, career. So I started, uh, actually started studying French in third grade on TV, on public television, uh, and then, then um, continued in junior high. But when I was in 11th grade, I started, I was lucky in my high school uh, to study Russian. And I got two years of Russian in, in high school. And uh, I, lived, I grew up uh, near Boston in a place called Weymouth, Massachusetts. Uh, and uh, I would go into Harvard Square, and one day I went into a, a bookstore called Schoenhoff's. I don't know, Doug, you may be uh, familiar with, the, with that bookstore. And I bought what was called a, a, a small book called The First Russian Reader. And I say that that's important because it was not a textbook, but I went out on my own to find something in Russian to read, little short uh, paragraphs, but I felt it was in a way as my own. So um, I, I became a Russian. I went to Colby College in, in Waterville, Maine, became a Russian major. Um, but I was interested in learning Chinese, even in college. Uh, so after, and so uh, after college, 1974, I found a Chinese class at the Cambridge Center for Adult Education. Uh, as I was so desperate to learn Chinese somewhere. It was a very good class. But then after a year, I moved down to Washington, DC to, to um, study for an MA in Russian Studies and International Affairs at George Washington University. And I kept studying Chinese. But you have to remember in those days, uh, studying Chinese was not easy. There were, you know, the, uh, the textbooks were in three different romanization systems. There were no, um, there were no dictionaries. Uh, you were stuck with the text that you had, so you'd switch back. And then there's all, there was also the gentitsa and the fantitsa, the simplified and the complex character. So it was a real challenge. But when I was uh, 26 in 1979, I started a job at uh, one of these offices in Washington that people don't believe exists. It's the, it was the Office of International Affairs. Uh, so it, it was like a small State Department for the Postal Service to maintain uh, relations with all with the more than 200 postal administrations around the world. So that office didn't need Russian speakers, um, needed French and Spanish speakers. Um, and so I used those two languages quite a bit. I had started studying Spanish at Colby. Uh, and in, in this office, I really admire my boss because they he in particular encouraged language learning. And in particular, there, was, uh, there were these early morning classes in Roslyn, Virginia, in Arlington, uh, where you could study um, uh, several languages with a maximum number of five people in the class, emphasis on speaking. Uh, so I was young. I figured I have to learn these languages. If I'm going to learn them, I should learn, learn them as, as soon as possible. Well, while before the uh, burdens of uh, mid-level management became, uh, would take up too much of my time. So I studied two semesters of Spanish, uh, a semester of French, a semester of Portuguese. I had, um, my first business trip was to uh, Rio de Janeiro, and I fell in love with the country, and three semesters of Chinese. And that is when I really, with only three people in the class, um, uh, five day a week uh, um, uh, class for an hour and a half, you really are put on the spot and started to learn. Um, but I should, I'd like to mention a little bit about this, um, uh, uh, the work of the Office of International Affairs in, at the Postal Service. Basically, this office represented the United States in an organization called the Universal Postal Union, which is one of the 15 specialized agencies, starting with the World Bank, WHO, and down the line. Um, and the, it's based in Bern, Switzerland. Uh, the, the UPU holds a 
plenipotentiary congress uh, every four years and about 150 countries attend. So I had a a lot of contact, uh, not only with, um, with, with people around the world and the languages were very important. And of course, even socially using Russian and, um, and Chinese. Um, in 1981, I started traveling abroad and I happened to attend and was the, the only US delegate at a um, Congress of Latin American uh, Postal Administrations in Managua, Nicaragua. And I had learned Portuguese and I became friendly with the Director General of Post, equivalent of the Postmaster General of Brazil and practiced my Portuguese with him. Well, two years later, he was elected Director General of the Universal Postal Union in Bern and hired me into the Secretariat. I was the only, of, uh, of about 150 people in Bern, Switzerland. Um, official language being French, I was the only American, believe it or not, for five years. So I had to bone up on my French, um, but I used uh, languages quite a bit in, in that job. I was there seven years. And um, of course there in Switzerland, I was struggling with French and it's a German speaking city, but, they, but the Bernese do not speak um, do not speak German. In fact, they speak their own dialect, which even Germans can't understand. But I, I, um, I persisted, uh, well, first to study French and then to figure out a way. I took a couple of classes in, uh, in German. Uh, and although I couldn't learn how to speak because there's no one in Bern to speak German with, I, 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 uh, I like, followed up very carefully to teach myself how to learn to read German. So now um, I'd like to come to a little bit of talk about uh, the importance of reading in foreign languages. And I'll talk a little bit about the special problems of, of Chinese. You know, in my view, um, I mean, people approach study of languages in different ways. Some people emphasize conversation, or some people um, focus on textbooks and, or doing their homework. Uh, but to me, it's, it's critically important to uh, read in foreign languages because it's the only way that you'll develop a vocabulary. Uh, it's, it's, it's true in English for that matter. I mean, if you, the more you read, the, the wider your vocabulary becomes. Uh, this is in 1984, my first trip to China, by the way. And just to show you that I wasn't always, I didn't always have white, white hair. Um, and here was my I, uh, 1983, before I went to Bern, I spent a month at the Shanghai Foreign Language Institute on vacation uh, studying Chinese. And if you look at the uh, lower corner, the lower uh, left-hand corner, there's a dictionary, the Times Dictionary, which I carried around with me everywhere. It was in December and January, so I had a warm, winter code where I could slip in that, that dictionary. But I didn't know how to look up words. <laughs> I had to teach myself what was a, I didn't know what a, a radical was. Nobody told me in those days, uh, the, the language learning was a little bit rudimentary. But when you read in a foreign language, you, you need to read books. Yeah, this is, I'll talk about this, this slide a bit later. Um, you need to read materials that aren't textbooks. Textbooks can become a crutch. So then you say to yourself, well, how do you, how do you jump, jump off or, and read real materials of some kind that native speakers would read? Um, so with, with a couple languages and particularly German, and Portuguese, um, comic books and, and Spanish, comic books are a good place to start because you can see the action going on, Disney comics are the, the best because fun stories, but the language that the character speaks, you know, Donald Duck, whatever, is like normal language that people speak. And you can, you, you just something to grab onto so you can understand a little bit of how, uh, get a, an idea of vocabulary. Um, 
then from comic books, you graduate to some easy text. You know, for me, Agatha Christie worked very well because they're fun stories, they're engaging, and there's not much description. And then from there, you, grad you graduate to easier um, uh, stories or novels. Uh, every foreigner studying English reads Hemingway's The Man in the Sea. So if you can find that sort of book in the target language, that's what you need, and then build yourself up from, from there. Uh, but you always want to keep in mind that um, you want to read at your level. Don't try to jump too, too fast, too far, because then you get frustrated. You want to find a way to just gradually build up your vocabulary and your comprehension. And there's also when you're studying language, I found this studying Russian, and by the way, eventually I read War and Peace and Dostoevsky and all these guys in, in Russian. There's a, there's a period you go through, it's in your second or third or fourth year where you have to look up a lot of words. It's a very painful period, but you have to go through that period. But Chinese is a little bit different. And a word of caution is that, um, I would have, I think you should avoid when you're trying to build up a vocabulary and, and, and reading skills, uh, don't read newspapers and don't read magazines. The vocabulary is too tough. There's a lot of references you won't understand. Try to read something that you can, day-to-day -day stuff uh, that you can really understand. So now we're coming, coming back, uh, coming to the last part of this uh, presentation or talk. Um, Chinese is different. <laughs> it's a dimension is more difficult than the other languages I've studied or I've mentioned. Much, much harder than Russian. Um, and you always think that with these other languages, you read for a certain period of time and then it starts to click. Then you can, then you can go on and read books and novels and so forth. Chinese is very difficult to get to that stage to be able to pick up a novel and then read it without without looking at much of the dictionary. Um, a little, when I was in the late 1990s, we were, we were getting ready for a, a UPU Congress in Beijing. These Congresses are like a month long, 150 countries, as I mentioned. And so uh, the Postal Service paid for a tutor and uh, uh, in Chinese. And so I had to supply my, my own reading materials. And so I, f I found this book, Brief Short Readings of Chinese. And one of them was, a, one of the readings was a chapter out of a novel called Family by Ba Jin, famous, famous book fam from the 1930s. So I figured if I could read the chapter, why don't I try to read the whole book? Which I did. I had, you know, I would, had time traveling on airplanes and so forth. But I, I set, set that goal for me to, to read Chinese and it would, turned out to be a trilogy of about 1500 pages. Um, but with Chinese and, um, well, um, eventually I, I retired in 2012 and I founded this advanced Chinese reading group. But in Chinese, you, know, you can have their Disney comics uh, there are classic comics from the 1950s, which are actually very difficult to read. So that's uh, a warning sign there. Once you read a, at a certain level, this magazine is great. And I've, I just found it after I retired, my daughter was living in China. My wife and I went over there for three months and just hung around. And I found at the kiosk, they were selling this magazine. And you can see I've published the, the um, the internet link. And these are really easy stories. Um, they're, they're like, it's the equivalent of like a Reader's Digest, and which made me think uh, when I was in second grade, one of my first things that I read, you know, which wasn't fun with Dick and Jane, was a Reader's Digest uh, compendium. So um, I would recommend the Scusha way there, there are stories, but the, the interesting thing about them about the stories in this book is that they reflect so so well everyday Chinese life and the thinking of a Chinese mind. So um, if you can find this this sort of thing or something similar, um, that's what I would uh, recommend. So to, to conclude, I hope and I hope I haven't run over time. Um, if you're good at languages, 
uh, well, start learning when you're long, young, walk around with a dictionary, read as much as you can, read at your own level. I mentioned Gushue, and then gradually move up uh, to real literature. And the more languages you learn, <laughs> the, every language opens up a new world for you. So I hope that's been helpful in some way to uh, folks listening.